Hey everyone, welcome into the Fence Bros Football Podcast. I'm Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Taglier, and we've got our week three waiver wire show. How's it going, Tags? Happy birthday, man. Thanks, dude. It's uh it's a good day. It's it's you know, people have asked me, like, what are you doing for your birthday? I'm like, well, I'm working. <laughs> I mean, once <laughs> once you're over like 21, birthdays are just like another age, and you're just like, wow, I can't believe I'm this old now. Um, but it I'm gonna I think we need to come up with a name for like today like what the day actually is is like bloody monday or i don't know what to call it it's just terrible and more bad news just dropped legitimately as we started to record uh that michael gallup is going to be out two to four weeks after having his meniscus trimmed but uh oh man i want to i definitely want you to introduce our guest but man it's it's a weird day to have my birthday with there's so much depressing things happening in the nfl we're going to talk about all that here in just a moment but first i do need to tell you about our guest it's scott fish he's on twitter at his name, Scott Fish 24 creator of the Scott Fish Bowl, Fantasy Cares. He runs Safe Leagues, hosts the Commish Pod. Scott, you are all over the industry. How do you have time, man? I don't. I, I don't have time. That's the easiest <laughs> way to answer it. I, I I I wish I had more time, but yeah, I, I I'm really stretched thin. It's it's good though. It's uh it's a lot of fun doing all those things. Yeah. So guys, we have a really busy waiver wire week because of all these injuries, of course. But, um, you know, first, I do want to touch on some of this tags. I know you did the review podcast last night with Dan Harris, but like it's not just the injuries. Guys, data doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if you're a tight end who's third on your team in snaps. Players like that can still lead the league in target share. It doesn't matter if you've been the most efficient tight end in the history of football for two years. Players like that aren't even guaranteed one target. It doesn't matter if you score 30 points per game over the last 10 weeks. Players like that can go for five points against the worst defense in football. I'm going to keep going, too. Don't stop me. It doesn't matter if you rush for 121 yards and 10 carries. The 49ers are going to put their third string running back in to vulture all the touchdowns from you. It doesn't matter if Justin Jackson gets 113 yards on 16 carries and gets a 75-yard touchdown called back. Austin Eckler is going to be half as efficient, but sneak into the end zone four times. ACLs don't matter. Achilles tendons <laughs> don't matter. Patrick Mahomes is going to have a 10% touchdown rate. And of course, New England is going to drop 45 points against me, even though I score 200 points and lose. I'm sick of it, man. Oh my God. That was an epic rant, Bobby. It was perfect though. I mean, Scott, can we disagree with anything he said? No, no, he's right on. He's and and I'm I'm happy for those uh like Mark Andrews with the third mount snap. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I'm not happy. <laughs> I I do hate that Justin Jackson is averaging 8.8 yards per carry and somehow he just can't <laughs> get enough touches. Man, he would be a superstar in Melvin Gordon's role. We're never going to see it because Melvin Gordon's coming back in three weeks after Austin Eckler has, you know, 12, 13 touchdowns. And he's he's fine. Austin Eckler's fine, but he's not Justin Jackson. <laughs> Dude, I left out like five or six things too. Like Duke Johnson's a third down back and Carlos Hyde's the workhorse. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> oh, dude, it's such a it's such a good week to be host, to be on a podcast with you, Bobby. I swear to God, that was like, that was perfect though. I mean, I honestly couldn't have said it better myself. And we are in an age where things just don't seem to matter. But again, we've got to go back. We got to go back to what we said last week and say we can't overreact to two weeks from the NFL season. It's not going to dictate what happens for the rest of the season. You can't overreact after one week. You can overreact after two weeks after getting scoring 200 plus two consecutive weeks and losing both weeks. I'm I, I'm boycotting the rest of the show. You guys have got this. I'll do the <laughs> ad reads. You guys do everything else. Well, if you're scoring over 200 points, I think we need advice from you. All right, guys, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of waiver wire stuff to talk about. But first, I want to tell you about a tool that's really going to help you out here. So in past years, when I would do waiver wire pickups, I would go to Yahoo and then ESPN and then CBS Sports and my fantasy league and Flea Flicker. And I would go to all of these commissioner sites. It would take me such a long time. But now I just go to my playbook and it takes a fraction of the time because I can look at every single league's top waiver wire targets all on one page. You guys are going to want to check out the waiver wire assistant. It is going to save you a ton of time. You can check it out at fantasypros.com slash my playbook and only premium subscribers can use it. So make sure to check out fantasypros.com slash offers if you're not already a premium subscriber. All right, guys, any news you want to talk about or should we just dive straight into the waiver wire? I mean, there's probably a lot of news that we should probably discuss. <laughs> Big Ben out for the season. Everybody else in the NFL hurt. Like, do we just go to replacement players now or does the NFL fold? I mean, when we talk about the waiver wire, I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot of these players, like a lot of the injuries that have happened because it's leading you to pick up players off waiver wires. But Jesus, man, it's that's why I'm saying like there's got to be a name for today. I, I, I don't know what it is, but 
it's a bad day in the NFL in terms of like injuries and what we're looking at. We haven't even talked about like Damian Williams having a knee injury or LaShawn McCoy going for an MRI. Um, obviously Drew Brees out for six weeks, Ben Roethlisberger out for the season, uh, James Conner getting an MRI on his knee. Like what the hell is going on? And I, I just don't know what's happening in the NFL today. And I feel like everything that I'm doing that I'm working on right now in the primer is all going to go to waste because like everybody's just going to die by the time that, uh, week three starts. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way, Jags. Thanks man. <laughs> 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 All right, Scott. So this is how we're going to do the waiver wire show. We start off at the running back position, then we'll go wide receiver, and we'll touch on streaming quarterbacks, tight ends, DST. That's not as impactful, though, because, I mean, these running backs, wide receivers are rest of the season players in some cases. So let's start at the running back position. And a lot of this is going to come down to, you know, what happens with Connor's knee, um, things along these lines. Maybe Devin Singletary's out for a while. That's another name you didn't mention. Uh, Mark Ingram is banged up. He came back in the game. Um, Raheem, <laughs> Raheem Mostert was the the main guy, even though Matt Burita was a monster. Uh, there's just so many things going on here. So who is your number one running back pickup that's owned in less than 50% of leagues right now, Scott? Uh, I think right now it's probably still Jalen Samuels. I mean, the, the, it's it's for me these are kind of bunched up, but Jalen Samuels has that potential to be a workhorse back. If it sounds like James Conner's injury isn't that serious, but uh, if he does miss time, remember he missed time last year. Jalen Samuels is the guy kind of guy that uh, can come in. He, he you know he was listed as a tight end. He was kind of a do it all at NC State. He's the kind of guy that can do it all for the. Uh, Steelers uh, if called upon so I, I think he's number one on my list for this week I've got Jalen Samuels number one for running backs this week I've got him number five overall just because there's so many good wide receivers I don't think James Conner is going to miss time tags it sounds like it's just a contusion are you hearing anything different uh, no, that's basically the, the leak is coming out that people don't think it's serious. But unfortunately, I mean, Jalen Samuels is once this news dropped about Ben Roethlisberger, I've moved him down. Like I have him as my number three running back pickup because, I mean, this used to be a very valuable role in an offense, but I can't say it is anymore. I mean, you look at this offense, the way that they performed over the first two weeks, it's it's not really one that you want to be associated with. And this was a concern that we talked about before the season, Bobby. We talked about Roethlisberger without Antonio Brown, the quarterback that he was before Antonio Brown became a thing. And it's like he was a streaming quarterback a guy that had up and down performances and we saw that and I, I I mean Mason Rudolph can he be a long-term answer for them I don't know we haven't seen him play in the NFL just yet there's been some preseason performances that have been not so good some that have been better than others uh, but this is this is not an offense that you all of a sudden you just don't have to tie yourself to the offensive players in it so I would rather take like someone that has higher upside or instant gratification are you worried at all about Benny Snell Scott not really I mean he had one 23 yard run this last game but he just doesn't look like a guy that can take the load. I, I think that uh, Jalen Samuels played almost every snap when Connor went out. I, I've never really been a big Benny Snell guy, so no, I'm not. Benny Snell? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Tags, who's your number two running back here? Is it is it Moster? I mean, would you pick up Justice Hill? It looks like there's no role for him, even though it seemed like there's sure going to be one in the preseason. Like I said, I don't have Samuels at number one. So uh, my number one pickup is Frank Gore. And my number two is Justice Hill. <laughs> Justice Hill is attached to a high scoring offense that and, you know, Lamar Jackson, Jesus, uh, uh, this guy is just kind of going through and just dominating football right now. I said in the offseason, if he somehow figures out a way to get better as a passer, He's a guy that like legitimately is like a cheat code. It's like a, a Michael Vick during his prime. It, it's tough to defend that quarterback, and he's looking fantastic. So, you know, Mark Ingram took a big hit last week. It looked like he was he should have been in the concussion protocol. He's not. But Justice Hill is like an elite handcuff because he's the one uh, getting most of the pass routes that the, is being run out of that backfield. And against Kansas City this week, he's, he could see his stock take a jump in the right direction because it's the first game that they're probably going to have negative game script. But number one... Is, is Frank Gore because we're looking at a, a spot where he's going to be playing against the Bengals defense without and Devin Singletary is not going to be active TJ Yeldon wasn't active for the first two games which kind of tells me he was deep down the depth chart they weren't considering him Gore should receive uh, I would say a minimum of 15 touches in this game against the Bengals who legitimately could not tackle they could not tackle any of the 49ers last week. Matt Breida. It was awful. It was so cringeworthy watching the film. It was awful. Those guys combined for 328 total yards and three touchdowns. Like, it's the 49ers. Who, by the way, Joe Staley went down in that game. One of their best offensive linemen. Like, what the hell are you doing, Bengals? Like, they look like the Bengals from the preseason who could not tackle Miko Hardman. The guys who couldn't tackle Darwin Thompson. Yeah, that's who they looked like. The third string team. That team was gross. So, Frank Gore... I'm ranking him as like a low-end RB2 this week. 
I mean, I, I understand that he's going to be the lead back, but that doesn't mean he's going to get 15 touches because, Tags, I was just writing this up. He's not a running back. He's a fullback for Josh Allen. Every time they run the ball, I'm, I'm not joking either. Like every time they run the ball with Josh Allen, Frank Gore is out in front of him. It's, it's planned. He's a man. It's part of the offense. Josh Allen's getting the ball 10, 15 carries per game. That's what they're going to do. That's why they brought in Frank Gore. It's apparent. Now, granted, Frank Gore is going to be fine, but this is not the offense that you want a guy who might get 15 touches and probably will get 10. Sure, against Cincinnati, I, I guess you could play him in the flex, but I, I wouldn't even go as far as saying he's an RB2 for me. I would. I mean, you had 41 touches for the, the 49ers running backs. You had 27 touches for the uh, Seahawks running backs. And even if we give Josh Allen, like he's run the ball 17 times over the first two weeks. So even if, let, let's say if we even give him 10, take away 10 of those. We're still talking about 20, 25 touches for the running backs. TJ Yeldon's not getting 10 touches. So it's like Frank Gore is locked into 15 touches this week. And that's why it's like, if you want to play him as a safe floor RB2, high end RB3, I am more than okay with it against this Bengals defense who ew, is just horrendous. And by the way, everything like the, the Bengals are going to be going on the road they were at home last week when they allowed all that stuff to happen uh, they're going on the road for buffalo's first home game of the year so yeah I, gore is my number one pickup he gives you instant gratification and you know it's possible that he's out that devin singletary is going to miss a couple weeks so how much fab are you spending on him then i i wouldn't spend more than five would you if you need a running back i'd be willing to spend 15 okay um you know we're, I mean, we're getting to the point where it's like, Fab, every single week that you don't spend it, it becomes useless. It just becomes a thing that you're kind of holding on to, hoping there's an injury. And and if your team is hurting for a running back right now, let's be real, like, you need to grab someone that can start. Gore can fill that role for you this week. No, I disagree with that. Um, I tag you know what I like to do with Fab. I understand your point of view, but I'm curious what Scott thinks about this. So, Scott, I like to save up all my money for when a Nick Chubb hits the waiver wire like last year. Uh, Marlon Mack hits the waiver wire and everyone wants him. And someone's like, I'll spend 55 bucks to get him. But if you've got 70, 80, 90 fab bucks, you've got yourself a potential league winner. I, I would prefer to save money and just let one of these guys fall to me. If I have to start Frank Gore this week, my team is in big time trouble. So what I do with fab is kind of in between you two. <laughs> I like to spend it most of it really early, but I always like to spend it on the one guy that breaks out early. I don't think we've really had that yet. Maybe, maybe last week we could have thought it was Marquise Brown or a guy like that. Maybe John Ross or something like that. That I think it was Marquise Brown and John Ross, but tax and I were both hesitant on it because Marquise Brown played 14 snaps and then he got that many targets this week. <laughs> yeah. So in one league, I did do that. I, I blew, uh, I blew over 50% of my bet fab on uh, Marquise Brown and it's it's worked out okay so far but uh, that's generally my MO is to is to use a lot of it on one or two players uh, as far as Gore goes I, I'm kind of with tags for this week I mean Gore had 21 touches last week you take Devin Singletary six touches give him to Josh Allen this week that's 13 for Josh Allen that makes sense in my head uh, against this Bengals defense I can see Gore getting 20 plus touches this week uh, total touches that is uh, as far as Justice Hill yeah, it just doesn't seem like he has a role. I mean, I came into the year knowing that the Ravens had the the most plays per game last year. I believe it was like 69 or 72 or something like that plays per game last year. And this year they're averaging 78 plays per game on offense. And Justice Hill still has no role. I Like, I thought that would lead to... There's room for everybody in this, but he just hasn't had it yet. I know Mark Ingram went out injured, came back. We're just not seeing it yet with Justice Hill. I don't think I can spend too much money on him, but uh, luckily in all my leagues, he's already owned, so I don't even have to make that call. All right, I'm going to ask Tags in just a moment why he likes Justice Hill still. But first, I want to tell you about a cool opportunity with NFL Game Pass. Only with NFL Game Pass... Can you replay every game all season long? You can relive all the gutsy calls, crazy catches, wild comebacks, breakout stars from every game every week. It's all the action, all the football you can handle, all in one place. I'm most excited to watch the Jacksonville Jaguars and Gardner Minshew games this season because he's just so exciting to watch him create and scramble, and he doesn't really have many options, but he made the best with them last week. It was a lot of fun. With NFL Game Pass, I can go back and rewatch every Jacksonville Jaguars game, either by replaying the full broadcast version or the entire game in only 45 minutes, which is what I love to do. It's their condensed games. If you haven't watched condensed games yet, you got to try it out. It's every play from the game, back to back to back, so you can replay an entire NFL game in a fraction of the time it normally takes. It's how I'm able to write my film review article every single Monday by watching every single game. I wake up really early for it, but it makes it possible with NFL Game Pass. Who's really going to win the AFC West, the Chargers or the Chiefs? Do the Saints have what it takes to stay atop the NFC South without Drew Brees? 
Have the Patriots gotten even better from last season? To see all the action this season and stay on top of all the big storylines, you need NFL Game Pass. And best of all, we've got a special offer for a seven-day free trial of NFL Game Pass. Sign up now at nfl.com slash fantasy pros. Tags, why is it that you like Justice Hill? Like, I, I get it. He was my number one most draft player. I, I thought for sure that he was going to have a role, that there was going to be a stark contract between him and Mark Ingram, and that he was going to end up stealing this job, or 30-year-old Mark Ingram was going to get hurt. He is a little bit banged up, but Gus Edwards seems to be running ahead of him. Well, it, it, it comes down to game script for me, and that's the reason I have Hill here, is because I, I'm not saying that he's like startable right now. This is like That's why Gore's ahead of him uh, in my rankings, just because it's all about potentially if something were to happen to Ingram, I'm not worried about Edwards, and the reason I say that is because he's like the guy who's going to play in those in those positive game scripts that they've had over the first two weeks. I mean, they played the Dolphins like that was that was a joke of a game, and then like last week they were in control of the entire game against Arizona, so they didn't really need to play someone like Justice Hill, who's more of like that boomer bust runner, where it's like a game like today, like this week against Kansas City. This is where I'm really curious to see what Justice Hill's role is because they're now they're six and a half point underdogs in this game, and. That's the first time that they're going to see that they might be behind in the game, which means Justice Hill is that guy they might need to help come back in games. And if he flashes, they might want to get him more involved. So it's kind of like being proactive with Justice Hill right now, knowing the matchup that they have on tap. And the same thing can be said for someone like Tony Pollard this week. He's probably not available in most leagues. People like they're holding on to him as a handcuff. He's someone that, you know, with the Cowboys being at home against the Dolphins, that's a game where they might be able to run the ball 35, 40 times. So you could be looking at, you know, 12 plus touches for someone like Tony Pollard. So those would be guys that you definitely want to be like proactive on if they're on the waiver wire and not wait till they have a good game where people just grab them again and hold on to them. So would you say if Justice Hill does nothing against Kansas City, you can drop him? I would drop him. Okay. I, I would say drop him as well. I'm, I'm hanging on to him for one more week. I'm not advising everybody else to do the same. I'm just holding out hope. But, I mean, if you're holding out hope for a, a backup running back, wouldn't you want – does Justice Hill have as much upside as someone like Chase Edmonds? Darwin Thompson? I mean, we Darwin Thompson's not even on our list to talk about today, but with LaShawn McCoy going for an MRI, Scott, I guess we have to talk about him. Which backup running back would you rather have, Pollard, Alexander Madison, Darwin Thompson, or Justice Hill? Uh, out of all of those, it's it's Darwin Thompson just because of the offense. I mean, Madison makes a lot of sense when uh, if Cook, you know, I say when because I'm a Vikings fan. I'm just I'm just used to it happening. But when, <laughs> if Dalvin Cook goes out, but uh, it's got to be Darwin Thompson just based on that offense. I'd take him over any of those three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, like I said, I still like Justice Hill. I just wanted to pick both your brains on on him and uh, and let people understand why you're advising people to hang on to Justice Hill if they have him, because a lot of our listeners do have Justice Hill and uh, pick him up if he's out there. Yeah, no, I mean, in so by the way, you mentioned Chase Edmonds. I think he's a drop right now, actually. And I know a lot of people were like saying after David Johnson, you know, he hurt his wrist. And once that happened, they kind of just avoided the running back position altogether. Well, that's, that's what Cliff Kingsbury always does. Like, we should have known. Yeah, I mean, like he like Chase Edmonds, I thought he would have had a bigger role when David Johnson went out of the game, but he didn't. Uh, like, he just didn't get touches. So uh, he's someone that I'd, I'd feel okay dropping at this point. Yeah, I would agree with that. In fact, I would trade David Johnson right now. Now, we're going to do this at the end of the show where we do buy low, maybe sell high. Um, but I want to mention David Johnson. I mean, Cliff Kingsbury's commonly on third down, running out four wide receivers, wide tags. You talked about this in your primary, how they're running double slots. Um, and on third downs, David Johnson's being asked to pick up the pass rush. He's not, I mean, David Johnson had so much appeal because who he's been on third downs. He's a running back plus a very good wide receiver. If they're not going to use him that way, I would gladly trade him right now for Devonte Adams or Travis Kelsey. What do you think, Scott? Oh yeah, e- easily. I'd, I'd take Adams or Kelsey any day of the week over, over David Johnson. I might've, I might've even done it in the first round of drafts, to be honest. Wow. Okay. I just that that line is is awful and, and the way they're using him now it, it just furthers it like the, the Cardinals line might be worse than the Dolphins line and that is really saying something <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I don't want to I don't want to overreact too much like he has eight targets through two weeks that's that's a that's a decent amount of targets it's not terrible but the reason that I'm I'm, I'm okay holding on to Johnson I mean he's the number seven running back through two weeks I don't I didn't see how many snaps uh, he missed last week but it was like half the game at least where he didn't play and if that's if that's what's happening I mean if he's the number seven running back he, he played against the Lions who by the way are an extremely good run defense like they stopped 
stop the run extremely well uh, ever since they had a Damon Harris into that defensive line. And then you go and you look at Baltimore. That's been an elite run-stopping defense for quite some time. And then they get Carolina next week and Seattle the week after that. When's it going to end? Well, knowing that he produced in these tough matchups, it kind of tells me that he does have a fantasy floor of like a top eight running back. And that's good enough for me. Whereas in good matchups, I think we're going to see him a bit more involved. That offensive line does suck. Uh, They suck last year too. Uh, But Devontae Adams, yeah, I'd take Devontae Adams. But Kelsey, that's... I probably would just considering the the injury to Tyreek Hill and knowing he's out another three to five weeks, but um, that Chiefs offense, <laughs> I mean, any any piece you can get of it, you're just happy. I mean, I understand. I mean, I understand not wanting to give up on David Johnson, but at the same time, Todd Gurley has 30 more yards total. He just got in the end zone one fewer times. He's in a much better offense than David Johnson. Yeah, he's not playing 90% of the snaps, but he's going to get more work because he's not in Cliff Kingsbury's offense. So I mean, at, th- at this point, I-, I value David Johnson about the same as Todd Gurley, just a little bit higher. I, I would trade him like that. Eh, I don't know. Ugh. I think that's a fair statement. I don't know what I would do, though. <laughs> <laughs> Any other running backs you guys want to talk about? Kalen Balaj. I mean, I guess technically he's the starter. Uh, Gus Edwards with Mark Ingram a little banged up. Jamal Williams got in the end zone. A- anyone you like, Tags? Not really. Raheem Mostert is going to be someone that people are going to talk about, but I don't want him. I, I Again, I, I mentioned this last week is that Matt Breida, a lot of people are going to like him and, they, and I knew that they were going to and I, I understood why they wanted to play him. But I said I didn't trust Kyle Shanahan to do what, what he should be doing. And it's like it just continues to happen. I, I mean, I, the, the, granted, the, the end result was good, but not for Matt Breida owners. So I, I don't know. That's an ugly timeshare that you're not going to be able to predict. Yeah, you'd almost need an injury for that to happen. I guess Mostert would be the one out of all of those. Balaj, I mean, if Drake gets traded, then then you're going to get some volume out of Balaj. But I mean, he's got nine carries for five yards. What was he going to get you? <laughs> 20 carries for 15 yards a game? I mean, that's... He legitimately ducked. He got targeted. He legitimately yeah. ducked out of the way of the ball on a screen pass. I, I don't know what Kalen Balaj is doing, but he shouldn't be playing football. By the way, the Jamal Williams, I, he had two good plays in that entire Vikings game, but but people will people will look at the stats. Aaron Jones is the man. Like he's that 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 was like an Aaron Jones breakout game for me. I don't really care what Jamal Williams did. Aaron Jones was like the clear cut leader of that backfield, and he did it against the Vikings too. Looked real good. I'm not just trying to suck up to you, Scott. I know you're a Vikings fan, but the Vikings have a really talented defense. Um, guys, let's do drop or keep just a little lightning round right now. Drop or keep Mike Davis droppable with bye weeks coming up, but he's still, he's still a multi handcuff. It's just Mitch Trubisky with how bad he's playing right now. That offense just isn't moving the ball. What do you think Scott drop or keep? Yeah, I'm a drop on Mike day. I've just never really been a huge fan of his. I ne- I thought he needed a lot of volume in Seattle to, to do things. What about Darius guys? Uh, drop. Yep. Drop on guys. Rex Burkhead. Hold. I don't know when you would play him is the only thing. Like I would almost drop him just out of not wanting to figure it out. Peyton Barber. Hold. 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 Ronald Jones. Hold. Yeah. Yeah. Reluctantly hold. Jordan Howard. <laughs> D- don't draft in the first place. Can I say that? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> that should have been the answer. <laughs> Why yeah. do you have him? Drop. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to the wide receiver position. This is where it gets a lot more exciting. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't know where to start. Geronimo Allison is who we thought he was. Golden Tate's coming back soon. Demarcus Robinson just won people millions of dollars, right? Uh, and then Terry McLaurin's a great rookie. DJ Chark looks awesome. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey's banged up. Nelson Aguilar's there. Uh, Hardman is looks solid as well. It's seven wide receivers deep, and then there's a couple other guys you could potentially add and play right away. Scott, who's your favorite of this bunch? For me, it's it's got to be one of the Chiefs just because I want a piece of that offense at all times. I mean, Miko Hardman, he had a 74-yarder I called back that, that a lot of people don't seem to be talking about. That I was watching that, watching that this morning. I'm like, oh, man, that's a lot. Of, <laughs> he could have had 130-plus and two touchdowns. Uh, I think he's going to be more of the boomer bus guy. I think Demarcus uh, Robinson uh, looked a lot more like a wide receiver one in that game, but he did nothing the game before. They're both really, really risky. Uh, Hartman might not be available for you. I think he's owned in forty plus percent of leagues. I, I would throw money at either of them. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a hedge answer, but I would go after the one of the two Chiefs first. Tags, who do you have as your number one? For what it's worth, I've got Geronimo Allison. I have Nicole Hardman as number one. He's a guy that should have been added last week. Unfortunately, he wasn't available in, in my leagues, and people spent over twenty percent of their budget to get him. And I was just I was behind on that one. I should have 
I should have bid on him, but I mean, again, I wasn't going to spend 25% of my budget on him, but uh, Demarcus Robinson is someone that's down the list a little bit for me, just because again, I, I think Sammy Watkins having a down game, it, it kind of like leaned Demarcus Robinson's way. And I, I just don't think that's going to happen very often. He's going to be a guy that is going to score a touchdown here and there, but I don't, this, we, we've already seen the best game that he's going to have in 2019. That's for sure. Whereas Miko Hardman, there is still plenty to be like, like, as Scott mentioned, I was going to talk about that a 74 yard touchdown called back by a holding penalty that really had nothing to do with Hardman. Uh, but he just burned LaMarcus Joyner in the slot in that play. And it was just disgusting. Just outrunning players like in, in, in Andy Reid's offense, that, that that speed has a lot of value. So Hardman is my number one ad this week. You know, it doesn't even have so much to do with Hardman. I mean, you could put Paris Campbell in this role as well, and he would be phenomenal. Paris Campbell would be a lot better. What I'm saying is Hardman's not a tremendous player. Andy Reid makes average or good players excel. I mean, look at how many wide open players Patrick Mahomes passes to. Granted, I'm not saying Patrick Mahomes isn't amazing. He makes amazing passes too. But what I'm saying is when you pair him with a guy who's getting players, you know, 10 yards of separation because they're running down the seams and nobody is picking them up for whatever reason, happens every single week. Hardman's going to get in the end zone quite a bit. And if he had 136 yards and five receptions, two touchdowns, he would by far be everyone's number one waiver wire pickup this week. People would be spending 40, 50, 60% of their fab budget. Budget, I think we can get him for 10, 15. Uh, I'm willing to spend more. I mean, he's someone that I, I would spend 20%, 25% if I had to, if it's like aggressive, an aggressive league and you need someone to plug in at wide receiver right now. It's fortunately, there's a few targets in the waiver wire where people might spend a lot on Demarcus Robinson. I just don't think he should be close to demanding what Hardman gets. Uh, McL- Terry McLaurin is going to get a lot. Like a lot of people are going to bid on him if they didn't get him last week. Uh, you're going to see people bid on Randall Cobb uh, now that Michael Gallup's out two to four weeks. Yeah, you're right, but Randall Cobb did have a horrid drop that led to a Dak Prescott interception. I don't know if you guys saw that one. That was infuriating. You know, Tex, I, I want to ask you about Jerron Wilson. Like, I get it with Hardman. He did only play 75% of snaps. Robinson was at 91%, so that makes me well, a little bit hesitant. But Geronimo Allison, we were drafting him as a top 35 wide receiver. Now, obviously, he was hurt in week one because Davis was playing ahead of him. Allison played all the time in, in week two, and he looked just like we expected him to look. So don't you still have him top 35? And if you do, does that mean you've got Hardman top 35? No, I don't have Allison top 35 anymore. Uh, he did lower down my board after week one, and it's basically because Marquez Valdez-Scantling is the number two receiver there. It, and I know that last week didn't show that, but as, as Scott can talk about as well, it's his, his Vikings defense. Mackenzie Alexander, their starting slot cornerback, was out for that game, and uh, that he had the best matchup on the field, where it's like Devontae Adams was going to be matched up with uh, Xavier Rhodes, uh, Trey Waynes was going to be matched up like in Trey Waynes has just as much speed as Marquez Valdez Scantling does so that was always going to be a bad matchup for Valdez Scantling and Allison should have had a big game big game and he was someone that I wrote about saying that I know it's scary to start him after a zero's target game but he's probably got the best spot on, on the Packers offense this week and I here's the issue when you got past the scripted plays for the Packers last week, they looked like crap again. Uh, and it was another Matt LaFleur thing where they're not adjusting in game. Mike Zimmer is one of the best in game adjusters when it comes to his defense and what they do because the Vikings came out flat on defense. They looked terrible to start that game. But Allison, I have concerns about the Packers offense as a whole right now, just because Aaron Rodgers, I, again, this is a game I watched the entire thing. Rodgers is hurt. There's something going on with his arm. Uh, he grimaced a few times and th- th- he was caught on camera doing it. I don't know if many people just didn't see it, but after I saw that, they were he was checking down a lot. He was missing throws. I know part of it came down to the offense not you know being past those scripted plays, but he didn't look right. And if Allison's the number three option for an Aaron Rodgers who doesn't look necessarily right... It's not, I don't, he doesn't get a vote of confidence right now. So Allison is like, he's a guy that I, he should have been owned for sure, but, and he still should be owned, but there's definitely some concerns around him. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think uh, Allison looked as strong as Mike did this week. Uh, MVS did uh, get the ball ripped from him on like a 20 plus yard pass as well. That Otherwise it would have been a little bigger of a day for uh, Marquez, but uh, you know, that happens in every game. Uh, Allison, I, I think the one shi- shiny note, if, uh, if, Rodgers is having to check down, uh, and he is a little bit hurt, his arm or whatever. Uh, Allison's a big slot guy that's going to have a, a nice size advantage on a lot of slot corners out there. So I, I can I can see some possibilities for for that down the season. Uh, but Tags is right; he really should be owned if he's been dropped. I, I guess I'd spend some money, but there are just so many more wide receivers I like more, even just on this list this week, that uh, I think I'm letting Allison go to someone else. 
All right, I'm going to talk about Golden Tate here in just a second, but first I want to tell you about Fantasy Draft, the only rake-free daily fantasy site in the business. They've partnered with Hooters to bring you the largest guaranteed rake-free contest lineup in the history of daily fantasy sports, and they're back for week three of the NFL season with another massive rake-free $1 million contest. The Hooters Million. That's right, Fantasy Draft is the only daily fantasy site where you can play rake-free contests 100% of the time. Listen, as other fantasy sites continue to raise rake, Prize pools are being squeezed, making it harder for players like you to win. Whether you want to call it rake, commission, or management fee, the days of paying 10, 12, or even 16% of your entry fee to fantasy companies are over. No longer are you going to lose 30% of your bankroll to the house. To access all of Fantasy Draft's exclusive rake free contests, all you need to do is become a member. Sign up at fantasydraft.com today with promo code FANTASYPROS. That's going to get you a free seven day trial on your first $1,000 in rake free entry fees. That's fantasydraft.com. Promo code Fantasy Pros. Don't miss your shot at a million dollars in rake free contests this season. Start playing on Fantasy Draft today. Your bankroll is going to love it. You know, I said I've got Allison number one. Uh, I've actually got Golden Tate number two because let me ask you this. I mean, I'm looking at Allison, Robinson, McLaurin, Hardman, um, all these guys. Uh, there's going to be matchups where you want to play them, but Golden Tate. You're going to start him most of the time. He'll be back in he has two more weeks, guys. So uh, why are we not scrambling to go pick up Golden Tate before it's too late? Where are you at with Golden Tate, Scott? I, I think you can say the same thing with Tate as you can about Herndon. Uh, try to try to scrape them off the waiver before they become uh, before they become options. I, I think he's an OK ad. He's he's a perennial uh, PPR monster. Uh, you, you might even be able to wait a week and get him next week. It's awful sneaky to get him this week. I kind of like that call. I like the addition here. And the part of the reason that I actually like it is because it seems like the giants are talking about going to Daniel Jones. Um, Pat Shermer will not say that Eli Manning is a starting quarterback. I think that's a mistake on his part to put Daniel Jones in there when golden Tate's not part of the lineup, when Sterling Shepard's still out with a concussion, because like the receiving game is just, there's just so many limited options. You don't want to throw Daniel Jones into a bad situation. Like you, you want it to be as good a situation as possible and golden Tate coming back is that my only concern is that the giants basically have two guys that play better in the same role. And that's golden Tate and Sterling Shepard where Shepard surprisingly, I I was really surprised to see it in week one. He played 70% of his snaps in the slot, which is really good for his production because he's been better in the slot. But Golden Tate is not a guy that's going to win on the perimeter at this point in his career. So who is losing that role? Uh, did they did they bring in Golden Tate to play him on the perimeter? Did they did they do it thinking that Sterling Shepard was going to move out to, to the outside? I don't know what they're doing there in New York, and that's my only concern about Golden Tate, uh, which is why I have him at number th- my number three wide receiver pickup behind Nicole Hardman and Terry McLaurin. So, Tags, you said Terry McLaurin at number two. Let's talk about him. He looks really good. And, you know, I remember you making fun of me three weeks ago when I said, I think Terry McLaurin has a chance to be the best rookie wide receiver this year. You want to take that back, buddy? Uh, Yeah, I think I have. To. <laughs> I think I have to. But, but I'm still not going to. I'm still going to say no because Marquise Brown's the best one. Yeah, you're right. And it's really not even close. He's awesome, isn't he? Marquise Brown, like I just got done like like looking, researching this game and he played 50 snaps in week two and was targeted 13 times. This is basically getting Deshaun Jackson in his prime with double digit targets like that's just stupid like can you imagine what Deshaun Jackson would have done with that volume so I've got him as a top 30 rest of the season wide receiver oh yeah like he's he's a wide receiver three with upside his ceiling is bigger than most in that area so yeah I have no issue with that but McLaurin my issue with him is not has nothing to do with usage he's the number one receiver there he's playing the most snaps he's getting targeted he's had four red zone targets in two games um he's getting targeted in the end zone so that's like a a great thing the issue with with spending so much on him this week is that you can probably let someone else grab him off the waiver wire right now let them spend 20 percent of their budget and then after they after he struggles against the bears this week this coming week then you can get him from a lot cheaper they might drop him again thinking oh it was just a you know a flash in the pan knowing he's part of the Washington offense, it's going to be a little bit shaky. You know, there's going to be ups and downs in his performances. I I don't think that you're going to continually rely on him as a wide receiver three, like someone you do like Marquise Brown. So McLaurin, to me, if you have him on your roster, I would suggest trying to sell high um, because his value will go down after playing the Bears this week. I really like that call. I've been a Trey Quinn guy all since the end of last year, since he did the Michael Scarn dance in the end zone. Oh, so good. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Keenum has has notoriously targeted the slot a ton over the last two years, and I thought it would be Trey Quinn's job. Uh, but uh, like you said, Ter- <laughs> McLaren has has played ninety three 
percent of snaps week one, 90 percent week two. He's going to be that guy. If if Keenum falters and Haskins come in, you got that college uh, that college combo of, of Terry and uh, Dwayne Haskins there. So maybe that's something, but for the most part, I'm with tags that it's a really good sell point on a, on a rookie for a bad team that probably he might have more of these games, but th- there's going to be a lot of downside for the rest of the year. So I, I, I do like the sell call there. Guys, hear me out, and if if you're listening at home, don't turn off the podcast right after I say this. Listen to what we have to say about it. Oh, no. I think DJ Chark is the number one wide receiver in Jacksonville. I think he's the best wide receiver when I watch. There's a lot of D.D. Westbrook truthers out there, and they hate me and you right now, Tex. I mean, I think people have fallen off. (laughs) Honestly, I looked at the rankings this past week, and people, like, dropped D.D. Westbrook down to, like, wide receiver 50 range, and I'm like, what happened to all the, like, the the lovers of D.D. Westbrook, and and is is it really Nick Foles? Because, I mean, Gardner Minshew has seemed like an improvement from Nick Foles as far as I'm concerned oh he was awesome man I loved watching Gardner Minshew if you guys don't know who were listening to the podcast I'm a Jags fan so that was so much fun watching him come back and then you know them giving the ball to Leonard Fournette taking the ball out of Gardner Minshew's hands that was a lot of fun that just kind of added to the fire of week two for me so <laughs> uh but I, I love DJ Chark I never thought I'd say this tags when they drafted him we were both like what are they doing with this guy like he's an athlete that's it that is it um, he has really turned into a solid football player, and I think he's the number one for Jacksonville. So I'd be happy to scoop him up. I've got him just after Terry McLaurin. I'd spend four or five bucks on him. Scott, what do you think about Chark? Yeah, I'm right there with you. And I I was a DD truther, uh, you know, not off the field, but <laughs> on the field at least. <laughs> I was a DD truther, but I'm also extremely realistic when it comes to fantasy football. I get my my man crushes, but I'm I'm easy to break away from them. Uh, when I, when I, you know, get new information, DJ Chark with Gardner, Gardner Minshew, it, it's clear it's his main weapon. It's clear. He likes that six foot four shark it, it, that hundred, hundred yards, a, a game average through two games right now. It's clear. He's the number one. I, I would definitely be putting a good 10, 15% on, on DJ Chark and, and, and feeling pretty confident that he's, he's going to get a decent amount of targets every week until Foles comes back. If Foles takes the job back. Okay, so we talked about our number one waiver wire pickups. Tags you at Hardman. How much would you spend? I'd be willing to spend 20, 25% if I had to, if I needed wide receiver help. All right, and Scott, who was your number one and how much would you spend? Well, I had Hardman and Robinson back to back. I did have Hardman listed above Robinson on my on my sheet here. So I, I, get, I think Mike's fair there. I, I really want pieces of that Chiefs, Chiefs offense, and I don't mind uh, going through the low weeks if I'm going to get the high weeks uh, at, at times. So I, I'm right in that 15, 20% as well. I have some of these guys right in that 15 to 20%, several of them. Hey, by the way, Chiefs take on the Baltimore Ravens this Sunday afternoon over under on Patrick Mahomes touchdown six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is crazy, man. I don't know when he slows down. Like he might get 60 touchdowns this year, guys. His yardage over under last week was 300, uh, like 301 or something ridiculous like that. And I thought that was cr- And he did it. <laughs> did in the first half. I've got Geronimo Allison, number one, same as last week. Like there's a lot of options. So I would just let whoever doesn't get picked up by somebody else. If I, if I get Geronimo Allison for four bucks, I'm happy. If I get Golden Tate for one buck, I'm happy. Demarcus Robinson, DJ Chark, Terry McLaurin. We talked about them. Hardman. I've got all those. If I get any one of those guys and I will, I don't need to spend 20 bucks. I don't see much of a difference between number one and number six on my list. So I'm saving my money. What about Nelson Aguilar, guys? I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with Alshon Jeffrey, but Aguilar would have a sizable role, obviously. He was a top 35 fantasy receiver last year. Yeah, I'm shocked looking at it now. I, I was like, no way, because I knew that he was good a couple of years ago when he was playing the slot, but ugh. <laughs> this is gross. <laughs> All right, so you're going to answer on Nelson, Nelson Aguilar? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I probably should. I mean, if... If Alshon Jeffrey is going to miss time and Deshaun Jackson might miss time, again, we don't know much about their injuries right now. You, you definitely have to bump him up. I mean, Zach Ertz saw 16 targets yesterday. That that can't happen every single week. Uh, so he's definitely someone that deserves consideration. And like he's he's number eight on my wide re- on my wide receivers this week. I I mean like him and Marquise Goodwin. It just depends on what you're looking for, I guess. But it's just hard to say without knowing what exactly is happening with the other wide receivers in the roster. Yeah. I just have other guys. I like a lot more that, that we haven't even talked about like Debo Samuel. I'd rather have him. Uh, James Washington. I, I, I would really, really like this week. Oh, James Washington is a great one. Yeah. We, we, I think we need to talk about James Washington because I think 
Again, this is going to make people in Pennsylvania very upset with me. It's not saying anything bad about Big Ben's career. He had a great career. Hopefully we get to see him play again. But when I watch the tape, Mason Rudolph looks like the better quarterback at this stage in Ben Roethlisberger's career. I'm not saying Mason Rudolph is great, but I do think he helps this offense. I would go out and trade for Juju Smith-Schuster, and I think James Washington is going to be a great pickup because they've got that connection from Oklahoma State. Uh, That's bold. Yeah, yeah. I think they 33 touchdowns together. Like most of uh, James Washington's awesome preseason uh, stats are are from Mason Rudolph as well. I I think I just think there's a connection there, and and we've seen it many times when a backup comes in, they you know find a connection with someone that they've been used to playing with like that. So Bobby, real quick, when you said Juju Smith-Schuster that you trade for him, where do you have him in your rest of season rankings? With knowing that Mason Rudolph is now the full time quarterback, wide receiver number seven. Oh, if you're that high on him, you're going to be able to get him in a lot of leagues. I, I imagine that people are going to like be panicking. I saw some people calling him. Who do you have above him? I saw some people calling him a wide receiver three for the rest of the season. Who are Ooh, these people? I'm not kidding, dude. People, people are a lot lower. You I'm, need to block those people and call the police. No, you need to find out if they're in your league and trade right. with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not one of those people that says he drops down that far, but I did move him. I'm going to pull up my rest of season wide receivers. Like, what is this? A two team league? Yeah. Okay. Maybe he's a wide receiver three get out of here anyways i moved him down to wide receiver 16 so i've i've moved him down quite a bit i would rather have chris godwin than him right now hold hold on a second like how bad do you think mason rudolph is you do realize big Big ben was not very good last season and he was still the number two because they threw the ball 675 times right and they also had antonio brown and they and juju smith schuster also wasn't seeing top tier cornerbacks he also wasn't dealing with a foot injury and now we've seen him for the first two weeks and he hasn't been great he had 84 yards against seattle in week two while playing injured that's fine that's the thing i don't agree with your take that mason rudolph is better than ben roethlisberger and that he's going to make this offense better i don't agree (laughs) with that and that's 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 where our disagreement is going to lie because if you do like if Juju is, if still had Ben Roethlisberger, even if Roethlisberger had a slow start, I knew things would get better for him and I would have Juju as my number 10 wide receiver, but I moved him down because of this, because of this injury, this offense will not score. I mean, they didn't score many points in the first two weeks, but <laughs> Juju Smith-Schuster is also not a top 15 wide receiver right now in the NFL in terms of like the points scored. Where is Juju right now? So he's, he's a wide receiver 31 after two weeks. And getting a downgrade in quarterback that's going to bring lesser scoring opportunities, I, I'm i worried. Hey, Tags, who led the NFL in interceptions last year? Do, do you know who that was? <laughs> I, I know you're setting me up to say Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, dude. Yeah, that's fine. Do you think they're going to throw 675 times with Mason Rudolph? He was flat out bad. He just had volume. I like the James Washington call, guys. I'm with you guys on that one. I talked about it on the podcast last night that we recorded. I thought if there's one player that gains value from this and doesn't lose value, it's James Washington. Hey, Tags, who had more yards per attempt last year, Ben Roethlisberger or Marcus Mariota? (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) So here, I think we should make a bet for the remainder of the season, okay? I mean, I would Mason be- Rudolph face Ben Roethlisberger. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like if you want to, if you want to bet on me, like I'll take Stefan Diggs and you take Juju Smith Schuster and I'll take Diggs. Deal. Deal. All right. That's a bet. <laughs> All right. I don't know what we're betting, but we'll figure it out next episode. I think you've already lost the, uh, the Calvin Ridley versus Corey Davis one. I did, but we never came up with terms to that bet. So I just lost. There's terms coming. Oh, that's no way. I'm not agreeing to anything bad. Guys, we got to keep moving on. There's a couple other wide receivers worth mentioning. Marquise Goodwin. It was just a broken coverage, so I wouldn't be that excited. Preston Williams looks good, but again, it's Miami. A.J. Brown's fine if you need somebody in a deeper league. Randall Cobb, you mentioned Trey Quinn. Uh, Let's talk about tight ends. Chris Herndon is the pickup right now. Obviously, you would have to get a streamer for the next two weeks. Um, Actually, would you prefer Will Disley over him, Scott? Probably not. I have a lot of faith in Chris Herndon once he comes back. So if I can handle it for two weeks, I'd rather just do that. I think Will Disley is... I mean, he looked he looked good in limited action last year, especially his first game. And uh, the start of this season has been really, really good. Uh, he's going to get targets. He's going to get options. Uh, it, it really depends on my other tight ends. But I have more faith in Chris Herndon consistently over the course of the season than I do Will Disley. All right, Tags. Disley or Herndon? 
or some other tight end. It's Disley for me, but I mean, neither of them are guys that I want to rely on every single week. Uh, and, and that even includes if Herndon was back, like he's not a guy that I'm going to start every week. And, you know, like when you look at the targets, how they're distributed, not only do we wonder about Sam Darnold and his future uh, this season, because some reports are saying he could be out up to seven weeks. And I know with Mono, it can take that long for people to recover. And we're talking about like athletes, like like world-class athletes here. Being that Jamison Crowder is a target over the middle of the field, Le'Veon Bell was brought in to get to a lot of those targets over the middle of the field. I just don't know where these targets are coming from for Herndon. I think that's a team that it's it's just going to be a boring fantasy team, and I don't want to attach to it. These They're all streamers is basically what they are. And then you have Disley playing against the Saints this week who have been really freaking good against tight ends. So he's not like a streaming option. So I just play the streaming game at tight end. I don't think either of these guys are going to be like long-term solutions. All right, guys, we're going to keep moving here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about Pristine Auction. You guys are going to love Pristine Auction if you haven't checked it out. We've got a registration code for you. When you sign up, it's completely free to sign up. So sign up now. Enter the registration code FANTASYPROS. It's going to get you $5 off your first purchase. And you're definitely going to want to get something because there's such good values on Pristine Auction. No matter who your team, your favorite player is, I'm certain you will find something that you absolutely love. Tags and I are always on Pristine Auction looking for values. And because there's hundreds or thousands that are auctioned off every day, you're going to find values. and Everything's guaranteed authentic from only the most trusted sources. Again, that's pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. Hey, by the way, I wanted to do drop or keep with wide receiver. I forgot about this, okay? Michael Gallup. <sighs> you have to hold, I think. Yeah, hold. I, don't, I think I'm dropping, man. It sucks, though, man. It's so, it sucks. I feel bad for that dude. Like, Yeah, he looks awesome. Drop or keep, Jamison Crowder. Scott, what do you think? I, I, think, I think you got to hold on him. I'm dropping him too. L- losing Darnold is rough, but man, that's. I would drop him for someone like Nicole Hardman or. Yeah, if if it's some if it's for one of these top five or six guys we listed, I I would I would drop him for those. But anything lower than that, probably not. All right, what about Anthony Miller now? Tags. <sighs> I just want to cry. I don't want to talk about it. I know, man. I'm so sad. <laughs> I loved him so much coming into this year. It makes no sense. He's probably going to have like a great five weeks at the end of next season, and we'll be super pumped. Yeah, he played a lot more snaps this week. He was on the field for, uh, it was 31 snaps, uh, running as the clear number three, but Javon Wims and, and Cordell Patterson were still coming on the field. I just don't understand why the Bears would trade up in the second round to draft a guy that they're not going to get the ball to. I, I, it makes no freaking sense to me. I, and who was extremely efficient last year while playing injured. I'm mad about it. And honestly, like if they want Trubisky, if they want Trubisky to get his like confidence up, they better start targeting Anthony Miller because he's a guy that actually creates separation and um, is a good football player. So I don't, I'm okay with dropping him considering how bad Trubisky looks so far, but uh, man, it's going to be upsetting if he breaks out and it's like we, we put him out there on the waiver wire. But if there's other options out there that are better, you just you kind of have to let him go. Dropping or keeping him, Scott? Definitely dropping him. I just don't think that offense can support a lot of fantasy stars as good as that team is. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Dante Pettis. Drop. 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 Easy drop. You know what? Sterling Shepard too. Let's throw him in there. Hold. Daniel Jones looked good in the preseason, man. He looked better than Eli Manning. Yeah, I guess. I guess I'll. It's one of those things where I want to hold him, but once again, I like about four of these guys better than him right now. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've got him wide receiver 50 behind guys like uh, Christian Kirk, D.D. Westbrook, John Brown. Uh, what about Kiki QT? I said one more, but one more for real. Drop. Drop. I'm keeping QT. You guys are haters. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's go QB streamers of the week. Uh, guys, it's pretty ugly out there, but who are you streaming in week three tags? Josh Allen. <laughs> He's still available. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding, dude. I, I looked at this article. Wow. I have no idea. He was available in like 62% of leagues, uh, like coming into the weekend. I told people, I'm like, grab him, grab him now because his matchup this coming week is going to be another good one. It's, I don't understand why. And again, he's the lead running back for Buffalo. He's a great option and he's available in most leagues. But I mean, outside of him, I haven't. I haven't gotten too far into this slate because like Andy Dalton, people are going to be running to get him. Yeah, but he's going against Buffalo. Worst, worst matchup in the league. Derek Carr gets Minnesota. Yeah, Bridgewater's on the road against Seattle. Mason Rudolph is at San Francisco, who's been better on defense. Like, ugh. I want to throw up is what I want to do. <laughs> so it's Josh Allen for me. Would you pick, if somebody dropped Mitch Trubisky, would you rather have Mitch Trubisky or Josh Allen, Scott? Josh Allen. It's a far, far better matchup. I, I know that Washington isn't a great matchup either, but uh, it's it's just a far better matchup, and you get those those rushing points. Yeah. If you can't get Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford gets Philadelphia this week. 
I, I know Mason Rudolph doesn't have a good match against San Francisco, but I'd take a chance on him before I'd go with Eli Manning, even against Tampa Bay or Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Like he's a lot of fun, but he doesn't have weapons. He has a horrid offensive line and Tennessee's a bad matchup too. Yeah, it's a bad matchup. I, I guess maybe you can hope for a shootout with uh, the Colts, maybe Brissett against the Falcons. Yeah, that's probably the – and he, he offers some rushing, uh, rushing floor, so it's not like the worst last-ditch option. But I think Andy Barron's put it best. He he put out a tweet like uh, earlier today. It goes, me last month, the quarterback position has never been this deep. Me, seconds ago. If I don't win this Andy Dalton waiver claim, I am absolutely effed. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically sums up how we feel that's a great tweet <laughs> yeah and like people drafted ben roethlisberger or drew Brees, thinking that they had safe quarterbacks that would stay on the field because they i mean doing that with roethlisberger was always a bad choice but uh with drew Brees, like he was a guy that was always playing 16 games or 15 games whatever uh but it's 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 pretty rough times out there man patrick mahomes supporters have a leg to stand on Okay, so streaming DSTs. I've got Green Bay for the third consecutive week. They go up against Denver. This Green Bay defense looks awesome. 17% owned. Who are you guys going with? You're first, Scott. Oh, man. <laughs> this is another one of those weeks just like uh, we were talking about with quarterbacks. I mean, the Seahawks play against Teddy, but they're probably owned. The Pats play against the Jets, but they're probably owned. The Bears against Washington, they're probably owned. The obvious one is, th- is the Cowboys, but they're probably too owned as well against the Dolphins, I would assume. Yeah, 70% ownership on Yahoo right now. Yeah. So th- then you got the 49ers against Rudolph, uh, who apparently is the best wa- quarterback ever, according to you, Bobby. And, uh, <laughs> he's not, he's, no, he's yes. not the best ever. I'm saying he's better than Ben Roethlisberger, who was not a top 20 quarterback when he got hurt. That was so good. I love it. I'm just kidding. Maybe you want to go with uh, the Giants-Bucks matchup, either side of it, just because it's Eli versus Jameis, and there's probably some turnovers. <laughs> but a really deep, <laughs> a deep sneaky one might be the Raiders against the Vikings. Kirk Cousins has fumbled four times in two games and thrown two picks. He looks terrible out there. Uh, I, I could see one of those turnovers going the other way for six, possibly, in a game like this. Um, that's a really sneaky, deep dart throw. The one pick, by the way, that cost the Vikings the game, that was the worst interception of the week by far. It was so dumb. First and goal, and he just launches it up with three guys defending him. Holy moly, man. I want to be clear and say that Kirk Cousins, looked he didn't look good, but I will also say that Kirk Cousins has been under intense pressure like the entire season like yeah but he's the worst quarterback under pressure like in the in the whole nfl over the last three years man dude well no he's been pressured on 61 percent of his dropbacks like the the only other quarterback who's been pressured more than 45 percent of the time is deshaun watson and watson at least has mobility to escape it cousins doesn't um the raiders have struggled to get pressure like they only pressured uh patrick mahomes i think on 18 percent of his uh dropbacks last week and that was without his starting left tackle so I, if there's a week that Cousins can bounce back, it's this week. So, so if, if people drop Cousins, pick them up. I, I'm actually going to rank him as a high-end QB2 this week. I don't. The ceiling may not be there because they're not going to have to throw a whole lot in, in, in order to beat Oakland while at home, but I think there's a safe floor with Cousins this week. Okay, guys, to end the show, why don't you give me one player you're buying low on? I already said Juju Smith-Schuster. So I'm not. I'm going to go off the radar here, and I'm not going to talk about someone who is like an obvious choice. I'm going to say that DK Metcalf is someone that I am becoming more and more fond of in terms of like picking him up or trading for him. You know, while someone thinks that they're they're being like you know smart about this and just getting rid of him, Metcalf has seen 52.8 percent of the air yards in Seattle. That is stupid okay so last year julio jones was the leader in the nfl that saw four he saw 45 percent of the falcons air yards that was the best in the nfl among wide receivers uh there was only a, one other receiver deandre hopkins who saw more than 38 percent so knowing dk metcalf is seeing those air yards two weeks removed from his knee scope you know a rookie in the nfl playing with russell wilson DK Metcalf is a guy that like legitimately could become a stable wide receiver three with upside with uh, playing alongside Russell Wilson. He's, he's continually moving up my board where it's like, we talk about the guys like Terry McLaurin and we we don't want to fully trust them because they play in a bad team. And we know there's going to be some volatility. The Seahawks are always a competitive team. And Russell Wilson is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL. All right, Scott, do you have one for us? Yeah, I I think I'm going to go along the same lines as your juju call. Uh, There are guys like Joe Mixon and Leonard Fournette who just aren't putting up numbers yet, but I feel like right now is a good buy low point for them because their owners might be starting to get frustrated and you could probably get them on the cheap. Their usage is uh, extremely high. Uh, Fournette is is basically touching the ball every dang time and he's going to get every goal line look. 
uh, he, I believe over the last two years, he's averaged uh, 21 touches per game. Uh, and, and I believe it's about that this year. So Leonard Fournette is a guy I would want on my roster. Same with like Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's putting up nothing and owners might be frustrated. You might be able to get either of those guys pretty low right now. All right, guys, that's all for today's show. Scott, really appreciate you taking the time to come on. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. This is this is great. And I want to say thanks to the sponsors of today's show, NFL Game Pass, where you can go to NFL.com slash Fantasy Pros to get a seven-day free trial of NFL Game Pass. Check out their condensed games. You're going to love it. And then Fantasy Draft, the only rake-free daily fantasy site in the business. You can get a seven-day free trial of your first $1,000 of rake-free entry contest. That's FantasyDraft.com, promo code FANTASYPROS. And then also Pristine Auction. You guys are going to love Pristine Auction if you haven't checked it out. There's great values. Everything's guaranteed authentic from all of the most trusted sources. Go get something from one of your favorite teams for your cave at pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. And then also don't forget to check out our waiver wire assistant, which is really helpful at fantasypros.com slash myplaybook. Again, remember, you got to be a premium member. So check out fantasypros.com slash offers to become a premium member today. For Scott Fish and Mike Daglier, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football.